Welcome back everyone to another episode of the series of fixing the text tree. This time we don't have TDs or AVs but MBTs. And the main battle tanks are heavier, better, decent, heavily armored or with new technology. So as you know in the game we have a few tanks and many have huge caps, unrealistic tier placement and uh, nerfs. Let's start this episode with none other than T-55. This T-55 is a crucial tank because many nations had it in the past and uh, some of them still has them in service nowadays. So from T-55 we go to T-62 and then to T-64A more than 1969. From T-64A more than 1969 it will split into three main branches. First is towards T-80, second from T-64A more than 1969 towards T-64A more than 1976. Both T80 and T64 A model 1979 go towards T80B, which is an important tank in this tech tree. The third branch goes to 372 Victory, a version with a different turret stock build of T72, like an early version. Now it's good that we clarified this free, at least for now. Um, and link in the bio about my research, and uh, the same goes for every tank in this tech tree. Let's get back to T80B. So this uh, T80B goes towards T80U. And here we have important tanks that we don't have in the game. T80U splits into three main branches. And let's start with the first one. The first one is the T80BV. The T80BV is an upgrade version of the T80B, which entered in service with the Russian Armed Forces in 1985. At present, Russia's Ministry of Defense has several thousands of T-80BV tanks mostly in store. Just imagine that. In July 2016, Russia's Ural Vagonzavod Scientific Research Corporation has announced the development of an upgrade kit to bring the aging T-80BV main battle tanks to the level of modern Western MBTs, such as Leopard 2A5, 2A6, and American M1A1, A2 Abrams. According to the Military Balance 2016 report, issued by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, IISS, Russia's armed forces operate 450 T-80BVU MBTs, about 3,000 tanks of such type were placed in store in previous years. It has also a variant that is a bit improved with an additional communication equipment named T-80BVK. From this tank we have an offspring, to put it uh, in quotes, uh, that is important to all of you to know. And I bumped into him during my research and find out that it was a tank quite important for the T-95. Today in armored warfare known as Object Y-95. So this is the Object 292 or the T-80 152 mm This was an experimental main tank for the working 152mm tank gun. The tank was designed by C.B. Kirov plant in Leningrad, now is uh, JCC. Spetsmash and the Institute of uh, Transmash on the chassis of the T-80 first time with the installation of a new turret, the turret of a T-80U with a 152.4 mm smoothbore cannon. Manufacturing experienced tank samples except for the loading mechanism not installed later but completed in 1990. The tank tests were conducted in the Erzhevsky tank firing range in 1991. The tests were deemed successful. The resulting increased ballistic performance for a shot pulse of more than 1.5 times higher than for regular guns to a 46 m one caliber 125mm. Despite this, test fire shown high stability of the chassis of T-80BV and reliability of all its components. The main thing, 152.4mm gun remained on 2A46M1 level. The required standards for acceleration and stress in the workplace anti-shock performance of the crew equipment were met. However, despite this, the history of the installation of high power guns in a production tank ended on a sad note. October 22, 2007, GSSC Spetsmash experts have shipped Object 292 in Kubinka outside Moscow at the Military History Museum of Armed Vehicles where it is nowadays. So, what you guys say about this? The second tank uh, from T-80BV is T-80BVM. 
The T-80 BVM is a more than many battle tank of Russian origin. It is an upgrade version based on an existing Cold War era Soviet T-80 BV main battle tank. The T-80 BVM represents the first Russian upgrade project for the T-80 series. Older Contact 1 era of the T-80 BV has been replaced by the new Relict era. This covers large portions of the skirts, the hull front and the frontal arc of the turret. Relict is not only effective against heat warheads but also increased protection against kinetic projectiles. Main gun, autoloader and APFSDS projectiles are improved. Night vision devices for driver and gunner are improved, but there is no independent commander sight. Fuel economy of the engine is improved, mitigating to a certain degree one of the main drawbacks of the T-80 design. Most notable, the level of protection is improved using a new relict explosive reactive armor. Some elements of the T-80 BV prototypes are missing, but could be added at a later stage. This includes remote weapon system and active and passive protection system. The T-80 BVM is armed with a 125mm 2A46M4 smoothbore gun, replacing the older 2A46M1. The 2A46M4 is more accurate and compatible with new Zvinets 1 and Zvinets 2 APFSDS rounds. The autoloader holds a total of 45 shells including heat, HE frag and 9M119M reflex anti-tank guided missiles. So, it sounds uh, quite nice guys, no? So let's keep on going to tier 10 which is the object 640 known uh, in the game and in the real life. And in my opinion should not be added as a premium tank for several reasons. Like in my opinion T8152 mm was better as a premium since it has a long lap like a long gap between uh, a lot of years and different eras of development plus with a decent armor and a very powerful gun so object 640 was better as a progressive tank the second and the third line of tanks starts with t84 the normal version and t84u let's start with the t84 and then with t84u so you can understand why i did this split they are a bit different but improved and for export so T-84 is a Ukrainian main battle tank, a development of the Soviet T-80 main battle tank introduced in the 1976. The 84 was first built in 1994 and entered service in the Ukrainian armed forces in 1999. The 84 is based on the diesel engine, the AT-UD. Its high performance opposed piston engine makes it one of the fastest MBTs in the world with the power to weight ratio of about 26 horsepower per ton. Later batches uh, of the T-84's composite armor is composed of special purpose rubber sandwiched between steel and alloy plates. The exact difference in performance between the new and previous armor is known and depends on performance of dynamic armor. Ukraine uh, has demonstrated several upgrade prototypes of this tank intended for both domestic employment and international sale. The 84 is actually the Ukrainian modernization of the T-80UD with new welded turret and Stora 1 countermeasure suite, new electronics, new main gun, new armor and 1200 horsepower 6TD2 diesel engine. Now going to T84U, it is just an upgraded version of the T84. It has new armor size skirts, turret conformal contact 5, explosive reactive armor, auxiliary power unit, thermal imaging sight, satellite navigation, commander's laser range finder, muzzle reference system and other improvements. Now let's go back to MT-84 line. Uh, we have something special for export. The T-84-120 Yatagan. The Yatagan is a prototype version of T-84 Oplot M and I'll tell you in a bit. That is a tailored for evaluation by the Turkish Army prototype designation Kern 2120. Mount as a 120mm main gun which fires both NATO 120mm rounds like the M829 DU series and a special 120mm version of the AT-11 Sniper ATGM. It also has an automated uh, gear shifting in place of a mechanical gear selector, a driver's T-bar control replacing tile bars, uh, air conditioning and projectile mother velocity sensor as well as differences in the fire control system, communication etc. 
and a large of additional equipment can be installed on the tank. The main goal of the development is the installation of a 120mm NATO standard cannon in a tank for which unitary shots of various types are placed in the automatic turret at the stern of the tower, 22 rounds, and rest in a mechanized packing in the hull. Which, regard to mobility, the Etagan tank is similar to the Oplot tank, the T84 Oplot M. Now, the T84 Oplot M is a T84U with a new welded turret with separate crew and ammunition compartment with blow up panels and a new bustle mounted autoloader. M stands for modernization of the T84s, but this is not all. The weight is slightly over 50 tons, a better engine a 60D3 diesel than the normal 60D2 on the T84, the normal one. Nose H era blocks to protect from newer tandem projectiles warheads a 125mm main gun with the all new autoloader system. The tank can shoot also NATO standard projectiles but as well as AT-11 sniper anti-tank guided missiles. So both tanks T-84-120 yet again and T-84 Oplot M goes toward to BM Oplot. The one that we have in the game and probably with the T at the end because it's very different than the other ones. Actually BM Oplot T is an export version for Thailand. It has some minor modifications to meet local requirements such as a different radio, air conditioner and so on. Thailand ordered 49 of these main battle tanks. Originally it was planned that all of these MBTs will be delivered by 2014. However, due to ongoing military conflict in Ukraine, the delivery was postponed to and completed in 2018. The BM Oplot we have today should be a T-84 Oplot T or BM Oplot T. But this is just my opinion. If you have any opinions, guys, leave it in the comments. And everyone can enjoy their snacks, but uh, ain't over. Let's go back to 272 Victory and T-64A model 1976. Other two important tanks that mark the history in the same way as T-80. Uh, let's start with T-72 Victory that is a normal T-72 stock that somehow had a sun to put it in quotes or an experimental version. This is uh, Object 785. This tank was an experimental tank that was developed in the design bureau of the Chelyabinsk tractor plant. It was uh, built on the chassis on the basis of the extended hull of the T-72 tank with an additional tie in the MTO area for a larger engine. A seventh track roller was added on each side based on the design of the T-72 tower. A new tower was created with a developed shaft niche and designed for a new automatic loader. A new power unit MTU-2 was installed with an engine with a capacity of 1200 liters per second bench power and the hydromechanical transmission. Two options for the main armament were worked out. The first option was the 2A82 smoothbore gun of increased power. The second option was a 130mm rifle gun. The ammunition load was 50 rounds, of which 30 were in the loading mechanism. Additional armament was a remote control anti-aircraft machine gun. Sounds promising and interesting, but uh, could it be introduced as a progressive tank as the previous ones? Well, guys, uh, I'm afraid not. Same goes to this tank, but also 48152. It's not so much to read about it, but uh, I found the tank that um, it should deserve to be added in the game since it's a missing link between eras where many prototypes were built and tested. Some saw mass production and some did not, sadly. Now, from T-72 Victory and T-64A model 1976, we have a common tank, the T-72 Ural. From T-72 Victory goes to T-72A. And let's go to 272 Ural that splits into two tanks that also change the history later on. The first tank is T-72B that is an improved version of the T-72 Ural with a new main gun, stabilizer, sights and fire control. Capable of firing 9M119 Svir guided missiles. Additional armor including 20mm of applique armor in front of hull. Improved composites. In the turret armor improved 840 horsepower engine. From him we go to T72 AV. I will explain why I placed this tank at tier 7. Personally 
is that T-72AV is a modernized version of the Soviet battle tank T-72B. This tank is fitted with new armor, new engine, a new cycling system. The T-72AV has entered service with the Russian armed forces in 1985. A version of the T-72AV was also developed in Ukraine and delivered to several countries in the world as the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Sudan and recently to Nigeria. The purpose of modernization was to enhance its technical and performance characteristics with more firepower. Replacement of the main gun and coaxial machine gun stabilizer the 2E28M with the 2E42-2 that has increased the effectiveness of armor piercing attacks by a factor of 1.3 and shape charge attack by a factor of 1.2. The weapon's laying and stabilization accuracy is enhanced by installing an electric drive based on the EDM60U low inertia motor in the place of the hydraulic traverse drive and by using the up-to-date components in the elevation and traverse drive control unit. I'm glad that I clarified this and uh, let's go to the other one that we have as a premium the object 187 which is an improved version of T72B. Going back to T72AV we bump into T90 which in my opinion is a tier 8 due to many reasons and I will explain why. Also going back to object 187 we bump to an improved version of it that is T72B3. Now T72B3 is an upgrade that was initiated in 2010 by using all stocks of T72B tanks held in reserve. In addition to performing a general overhaul of every vehicle, certain tanks were equipped with the more powerful V92S2 engines, a new steering system in the driver's compartment and all the tracks were replaced with new universal twin pin design. The upgrade programs were focused instead on improving the tank's firepower mainly through the implementation of Kalina fire control system in a simplified form. B3 is like the third generation than the other ones prior to small updates and upgrades something like this. And there are plenty of versions such as T72BA, ERA, BK, BV, B1, B1K, B1MS, B from 1989 and 1990, etc. Just a few to mention uh, and that's why it's more improved but somehow different by its previous object 187. From T72B3 we, we go also towards T90 which is the foundation of the T90 version but uh, in general from T72AV and T72B3. Then it's the T90A, the improved one later on. At tier 10 in my opinion, by how the tank it is nowadays and uh, the same caliber as the T14 Armata is the T90 MS. This tank should be in a tier 10 and not a tier 9. Some facts. Let's start with the first one. The T90M is the latest version of the T90A. The main features includes the modernization of all turret design which is equipped with the new advanced fire control system Kalina with integrated combat information and control systems, improved armor on the ammo carousel and the new upgraded gun 2A46M5 as well as remote control anti-aircraft gun UDP T05BV1. The new version also includes the Relict era bricks instead of the Contact 5 era bricks. Other improvements include a new 1130 horsepower V92 S2F engine, an enhanced environmental control system and the satellite navigation system. Now, T90S, it is the export version. It was made by Ural Wagon Zavod and were updated with a 1000 horsepower engines made by Chelyabinsk tractor plant. These tanks carry a leaner version of the Stora 1 passive active protection system which lacks the infrared dazzler carried on the turret. Combining both T90M and T90S we have T90MS, basically the export variant of the T90M ProRiv 3 2019 year plus a bit of technology from T90S. I hope I clarified that for some of you guys to understand why I placed this tank at tier 10. Down the line, back to 272A, we got T72M1, improved version, T72M2 Wilk, and another improved version 
of T72 M1 and T72 M4 CZ, which is also an upgraded version. Between 2003 and 2006, 30 tanks were produced. The main armament is a 125mm gun 2A46M, kinda similar to this gun, no? Like, like with the T72 AV and T90 and so on, it's like kinda similar. For protection, a new era is called Dyna, meaning dynamic armor development in Czech was added along with full NBC protection and a fire detection and suppression system by German company Kida Duga. So the tank uh, is like a second to fourth generation upgrade to fight against uh, those at generation 3 and 4 and that's why I place him here. However, bothers me and makes me to close my eyes uh, in this game and that's because of the burlak. The goal of the Burlak was to allow for an upgrade of the existing Russian tanks and technology, in the end to result in a modern MBT. While it was previously shelved, it is worth noting that this could be far more affordable than the T-14 Armata which has been repeatedly delayed. The Burlak actually is situated in real life on chassis of T-72, T-80 and T-90. However, real life chassis for Burlak Narmuri Warfare was a very weak point for the tank and I quote unlike the real life prototype we decided to position the Burlak turret on a more modern and viable platform the T90A as such the vehicle resembled the T90A in many aspects although there will of course be some differences to make it more unique and um, here also goes towards T90A that is placed in my opinion at tier 9 on the sides and below, as you guys see, we have tier 10s such as Object 195, T14 Armata, Object 490A and Object 490B. Similar guns but different armor. 490A is more like a decent MBT but in my opinion you'll have to unlock the armor and other things to make it more work properly. Where 490 is more like a strongly sturdy armor tank, looking more like a tank destroyer and obviously uh, other tanks... Uh, at lower tiers such as i7 object 430 object 279 and t55 m1 in, in my opinion some of them should have been premium and some not progressive because of several reasons experimental tanks different chassis modified to sustain the recoil of the main guns different upgrades overwhelming weight unpractical use some saw mass production and testing impressive but still fail to this day as T14 Armata, some are like the foundations of others such as Object 195 for T14 Armata, some have no decent history or very decent information about them. With this being said dudes, I hope you enjoyed this video of this series. This is the Marashishkin Tech Tree, took me like 2 weeks to make this video and gather all this information. Tell me your opinion about this in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe and see you next time in the next episode. Bye bye.